Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is going to be an interesting video because it is actually a subscriber's comment that we're gonna be doing a video on. So I got this comment from Eric right here. He asked for post spawn baits other than a frog that are weedless. So most of the times fishing ponds and stuff like that, we're actually out on a small lake by my house today where we have a ton of weeds. We have early post spawn bass. They really don't wanna eat right now. They're super lethargic. And we're gonna show you my favorite and easiest way just to get a bunch of bites during the post spawn. Spawn. So let's get right into today's video and we'll have you catching more post spawn fish in no time. So before we jump into today's video, if there's anything you guys want to see, just like Eric commented there, he's very interested in seeing a weedless technique for catching these fish during the post spawn. If you can leave me some specific comments like that, we'll do a featured comment on most of these videos going forward and I'll make videos tailored to what you guys want to see. So go ahead and leave your comments down below on this video and other videos going forward. If there's anything that you guys are having trouble with fishing, want to learn how to do better or have any any questions like that, leave that down below and we'll make videos featuring your guys' comments every single week. So the best way to catch fish during the post spawn, one of my favorite techniques that I grew up fishing when I was very young and didn't know much about fishing, I was just getting into it, learning different techniques. This was one of my favorites and I caught a ton of fish during the post spawn and ever since I've started learning all these other techniques, I often forget about how effective this technique is at catching post spawn bass. And that is just a simple Senko on a Texas rig, no weight. And this is probably a very basic technique. Most of you probably already know it, but we're gonna break it down today, why it works so well. And then we're gonna go out on the water and actually fish this and hopefully show you guys how to catch some post spawn bass today using this technique on the water during the same conditions that you guys are probably facing right now. So we're gonna go over the rod, reel, line setup, what type of worms you wanna use, how to set this bait up. And we're gonna go out there and catch some fish. So. Number one thing is going to be your rod. This right here is what I'm using for today. This is gonna be the Kistler Dock Skipper. This is a brand new rod that just came out. This is a six foot three, light, medium, heavy with an extra fast action. So this has a little bit of backbone to set the hook since we do have a Texas rig. It also has a very short length to allow me to cast up tight to some of these wood laydowns underneath bushes, docks if you have them, stuff like that. It makes very accurate casts to the type of cover that you're fishing. And you wanna get this tight to cover. These fish aren't gonna move very far for a bait right now. They're very lethargic. If something lands in their face and they do wanna eat it, they will. But for the most part, they're not gonna go chasing down baits unless you find some schooling or active fish, ones that have been off the beds for a while and have already recovered. The other thing I have here is I have a Kistler Series 1 spinning reel. That is what I have this paired up with. It is a 2000 size, it's just a small setup. I like a reel in that two to 3000 size. It keeps my setups a little bit lighter and smaller, allows me to make more accurate casts to the type of cover I'm fishing. But the more important part here is going to be my line. This is lime green suffix 832 in 15 pound test. What I do with this, it floats and it's bright green. So I can see what this bait is doing at all times. It's a weightless bait. So oftentimes you can't feel what the bait is actually doing down there. So I'm gonna throw this up next to the cover wherever I'm throwing it. You'll see your line actually go out when a fish is taking it or if it's just sinking to the bottom. And then when it lays slack on the water, you'll know that your bait is on the bottom and you can drag it forward a little bit to actually impart some action into your bait. Main thing with this bait though, is that the action comes from the bait itself and not you actually working the bait. And we'll talk about that when we're out on the water fishing this here in just a second. The other thing I do is tie on about a 10 foot liter of eight pound fluorocarbon. I put this on here with an Alberto knot to make sure that the fish do not see this lime green braid. I have very clear water that I'm fishing here today. So I do not want these fish to see this braid. The eight pound fluorocarbon, allows me to get that invisibility factor from fluorocarbon, but also have that ability to see what my Senko is doing with this lime green braid here. Oftentimes you'll see the line jump or you'll see it go left or right whenever a fish grabs this and is swimming away with it and allow you to make better hook sets and land more fish. And you can up the size of your fluorocarbon depending on what you're doing. If you're fishing docks, stuff like that, you might wanna go up to like eight, even 12 pound test. It also gives you the advantage to have one reel, be able to change your line test to whatever you want and whatever the conditions are while you're out there fishing. So the next two things that you need to make this rig, I have a six cents stout extra wide gap hook right here. This is a three aught size and it is perfectly paired up with this bait here that I have. This is the Clout 5.4. Most people would go with a five aught hook in this bait. I go with the three aught so it gives it more action. The smaller your hook is, the more shimmy you're gonna get out of this bait and the more action you're gonna have because it's not keeping that bait stiff when you have a Texas rig. So I like the three aught size and I also like very lightweight. So if you go to a five aught hook, it's gonna weigh just slightly more 
than a three aught. Not much that you're even going to notice in your hands, but enough that the bait will fall differently in the water. That's also why I go with the stout extra wide gaps over like a light wire wide gap. This has a little bit of extra weight. I do want just a little bit of weight. Also in my bait, you have to choose the right Senko as well. If you choose a Senko that does not have enough weight to it, like a Yum Dinger or something like that, it doesn't have a lot of salt in the bait, it's gonna take forever to sink and it's actually not gonna get down to where the fish are. Have this Texas rigged, like I said, with no weight on it. You do not want any weight. This is perfectly weedless. You're not gonna get hung up. It'll come through all the grass. And a lot of times what we're gonna be doing today is actually throwing this in holes in the grass or to the edge of the grass and just let it slowly fall right down the edge of these grass lines. And one last thing we're gonna talk about before we take this thing out on the water is your color selection. I like to keep it really simple. I like a black or a black and blue is usually what color I like to use when the water's little dirty. Today we have some cleaner water and we also have bluegills spawning. Most of the times post spawn bluegills are already going to be spawning. The bass are going to be coming off and they're going to intersect. The bass will hang around the bluegill beds. That's going to be the first piece of cover they're going to stop on and the bluegills will spawn right near those bass and that's their food source for a while. So I like a lot of bluegill colors. Watermelon red, um, sprayed grass, that type of color. This one right here is called Green Pumpkin Magic. It is my favorite color for fishing around the bluegill spawn. It has a green pumpkin base with a little bit of black flake, and then it has some different colored flake and glitter, and it. it's like a hologram color glitter. A lot of gold and silver, but it also has shined some different colors in there. It just really, when the fish are feeding on bluegills, I've had a ton of success with this color right here. If you're interested in checking any of this product out, I will link all of it down below. And for the Sixth Sense product, if you want to use my code Quince, you will save 10% on on your entire order and you'll be helping out the channel a ton. So we have our bait Texas rigged up right here. Let's get out on the water and see if we can catch a couple bass on this. So what we want to do when we're fishing this weightless Senko is we're going to look for areas where these fish can hang out and just kind of recuperate. So a lot of these bluegills are spawning up here on this bank. There's bluegill beds. I've been seeing them on my 360 here and I've been catching fish around those bluegill beds. But a lot of this is like overhanging bushes, shade, and trees sticking out. So I have shaded bush and a tree right here. I'm going to skip my Senko right up there. That's the perfect cast. You want that right up under there as tight as you can get it. And then less is more when you're fishing this Senko. So I'm literally going to cast that up there and I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to throw it there and just let it sit there. Let's sink all the way down to the bottom. When it's on the bottom, I'll lift up and give it a couple twitches to move it forward a little bit, and then I'll let it sink again. And when you lift up, oftentimes these fish are just going to hit it on the fall. If they see that come in near that log, this water's clear. They can see it coming. They'll swim over and get it while it's sinking down. So you'll go to lift up and you'll feel the weight of the fish on there, and that's when you'll set the hook. Oftentimes you're not going to actually feel the fish bite it, uh, you might watch your line. That's why we have the lime green braid. You might watch your line move left, right, or jump, and then you'll know a fish bites it. But other than that, oftentimes what I'm doing is I'm just, I have a, there we go. Not a big one, but like I said, I literally watched my line jump. It wasn't even on the bottom, never felt the fish bite it, but I knew he had it so I could set the hook and bring that fish in. That was a perfect example of what you wanna do there. I threw it right next to this tree, perfect area for a fish to stage. Again, not a big one, we'll throw him back. But all I did was just let that sink there. I wasn't doing anything. I was talking to you guys, trying to tell you how to fish this, but that is how you fish it. You literally just let it sit there. If you don't feel the bite, you're, all you're gonna feel is pressure. You're gonna feel like you're stagged on something, or if you're stuck in the grass or stuck in the log that's down there. And that is basically what a bite is gonna feel like. It, it's never gonna be like a jig bite. It's never gonna be like a reaction bait. You're never gonna feel these fish bite this. It's just gonna be weight and you just set the hook and reel them in just like that. So let's see if we can get us another one here. Now, while that last one was a perfect example of what it looks like when the fish actually bite it and you can see your line jump, that fish was a perfect example of what most of these bites are gonna be like. I skipped it right under this bush here. I literally had it laying there in the water. I reeled up to see if I had anything on and I could just feel my line swimming away. It felt like I was stuck in the log or bush or wood grass, whatever's under there. 
that's exactly what most of them are going to feel like again not a big one but like i said this bait is perfect for when these fish literally do not want to eat anything else i've had a tough day today we have not caught a lot of fish but i'm getting bites on this and that's all that matters sometimes it's not about i'm out here fun fishing it's not about how big the fish are or anything like that i'm just trying to learn how to get better and catch more fish while i'm out here on the water and have some fun perfect way to have fun all you need is a bag of senkos and a pack of hooks skip them around and catch some fish. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on the easiest way to catch some post-spawn bass. This is a super easy technique. If you're just getting into fishing and you're having trouble catching fish right now, give this technique a try. You will catch a ton of fish. Even if you're experienced, I throw this technique all the time and I catch a ton of bass in the post-spawn. If you wanna check out some other post-spawn baits, go ahead and check this video out right here. Hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed today's video and leave a like as well.